Hey YouTubers, Lonnie Clark again, Nuts for Art. I'm going to read more of our book, Poison Power, uh, The Case Against Nuclear Power Plants. So we're on Chapter 8, and that is on page 189. The title of the chapter is The Nuclear Legacy, Radioactive Waste and Plutonium. In 1963, the United States, the Soviet Union, and a number of other nations signed a treaty banning the nuclear weapons tests in the atmosphere. Up to that time, the United States and the USSR had exploded nuclear fission-type bombs equal to some three to 400 megatons of TNT in the atmosphere. The radioactive fallout from these bombs contaminated Excuse me, the radioactive fallout from these bombs contaminated the land, the waters, the vegetation, the animals, and man himself. Indeed, a concern over biological effects of this devastating fallout was the main reason for the Atmospheric Test Ban Treaty. A single large nuclear power plant, 1,000 megawatts electrical, produces as much radioactive material in one year as a 25 megaton atomic bomb can produce. Let's read that again. That's fucking amazing. A single large nuclear power plant produces as much radioactive material in one year as a 25 megaton atomic bomb can produce. If the nuclear power plants now on order are built, uh, I think we built half of them because this was written in 1972. They will produce 10 times as much radioactivity each and every year as was produced by all the atmospheric weapons tests before the treaty. So we built half of them, so that means we have five as much radioactivity? By the year 2000, nuclear power plants now planned will be producing 100 times as much radioactivity each year. So it's getting exponentially bigger. Unfortunately, the evidence to date indicates that appreciable quantities of the radioactive material will find their way into the environment and thence into man. 2015, that's where we're at. Fuel processing plants take the spent fuel rods from reactors and reclaim the fissionable material, leaving behind tremendous quantities of radioactive waste. The AEC and several fuel reprocessing and waste storage, I'm sorry, the AEC has several fuel reprocessing and waste storage and disposal sites. At the present time, there is one private fuel reprocessing plant and several private waste disposal sites. Private waste disposal sites, you know what the, one of those is? St. Louis. And you know the harm we now know it's causing? Oh my God. Let me read that again. Fuel reprocessing plants take the spent fuel rods from reactors and reclaim the fissionable material, leaving behind tremendous quantities of radioactive waste. The AEC has several, reprocessing, several fuel reprocessing and waste storage and disposal sites. At the present time, there is one private fuel reprocessing plant and several private waste disposal sites. The one commercial fuel reprocessing plant is the Nuclear Fuel Service Plant in West Valley, New York. The safety regulations under which it operates are a travesty to the public health. Data on the radioactivity release from the West Valley plant published by the U.S. Public Health Service indicate that any person eating as little as one pound of fish per week from the Cataragas River, where the plant's wastes are released, would be exposed to the guideline dosage of 0.17 rad. The plant is operating at only a fraction of its planned capacity. Moreover, in the August issue of Radiologic Health and Data Reports, it states, quote, Suckers are taken from the Cataragas River for food, especially in the springtime. In addition, there may be a practice of grinding up the flesh and bone to make fish burgers, unquote. 
This is from Dr. William J. Keller, Environmental Surveillance Around a Nuclear Fuel Reprocessing Installation, 1965 to 1967. Radiological Health Data Report 1033, uh, uh, I beg your pardon, Radiological Health Data and Reports 10, page 335, 1969. Wow. Nuclear Fuel Services is also licensed by the AEC for waste, quote, disposal, unquote. As a result, the company has a burial site on the West Valley compound. The July issue of Radiological Health and Data Reports shows that 10 to 15 percent of the, of the radioactivity in the creek is coming from this so-called burial site. And that is N.I. Sachs et al. Radiological surveillance of the waterways around the nuclear fuels reprocessing plant. Radiological health data and reports. 10, page 294, 1969. Even if the reactors maintain low discharge rates, it appears from the West Valley story that these fuel reprocessing plants and waste burial sites may well bring our groundwater and rivers to the limit of the regulations. This is 1972, folks. The West Valley story demonstrates the true attitude of the AEC towards its regulations and one of the reasons why it is so reluctant to make them more restrictive. In the AEC's 1969 publication, The Nuclear Industry, we read the following. Intermediate level liquid waste is a term, ta excuse me, intermediate level liquid waste is a term ap applicable only to radioactive liquids in a processing status, which must eventually be treated to produce a low level liquid waste, which can be released, and a high level waste concentrate, which must be isolated from the biosphere. Low-level liquid wastes are often defined as those wastes which, after suitable treatment, can be discharged to the biosphere without exposing people to concentrations in excess of those permitted by AEC regulations. Wastes generated in the cold or pre-irradiation phase of the fuel cycle, from the mine to the reactor, as well as waste resulting from research laboratories and medical and industrial applications of radioisotopes are generally considered as low level or low hazard potential waste. Really? That's what that is? Wow. This is why Dana starts screaming. The West Valley plant is discharging low-level waste, which the AEC considers as a, quote, low hazard potential, unquote. A 5 to 50 percent increase in genetic disorders and deaths plus a 10 percent increase in cancer deaths to impress, appears to impress the AEC as a small hazard. Holy crap. The AEC's own waste disposal practices are no better than those of the West Valley plant. In 1965, at the request of the AEC, the Committee on Geological Aspects of Radioactive Waste Disposal of the National Academy of Sciences National Research Council made a final review of waste disposal practices at the Atomic Energy Commission's installations. The committee submitted its report to the AEC in May 1966. The, uh, the, this is the nuclear industry. Oh, okay. The AEC immediately suppressed the report, ignoring repeated requests to release it. Huh. Just as exactly what they do now. They just completely ignore anything. They don't, they refuse to answer. The AEC immediately suppressed the report, ignoring repeated requests to release it. Finally, in 1970, in response to pressures applied by Senators Frank Church and Edmund Muskie, the report was made public. 
and this is uh, the National Academy of Science National Research Council, Division Earth Sciences, Committee on Geological Aspects of Radioactive Waste Disposal, John E. Galley, Chairman. Report to the Division of Reactor Development and Technology, U.S. Atomic Energy Commission, May 1966, unpublished. Wow. As expected, it is critical of the AEC's waste and storage and disposal practices. What are you doing? <laughs> My friend's here and she's like crawling around in the back. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm going to end here. I'm going to come back to this. We are at the top of page 193 and I'm just going to stop because I have to reread this. This is fucking outrageous. <laughs> I mean, for real. They did not even publish it. Listen to this. I'm going to repeat this. The AEC's own waste disposal practices are no better than those of the West Valley plant. In 1965, at the request of the AEC, the Committee on Geological Aspects of Radioactive Waste Disposal of the National Academy of Sciences National Research Council made a final review of waste disposal practices at the Atomic Energy Commission's installation. The committee submitted its report to the AEC in May 1966. The AEC immediately suppressed the report, ignoring repeated requests to release it. Finally, in 1970, in response to the pressures applied by Senators Frank Church and Edmund Muskie, the report was made public. As expected, it is critical of the AEC's waste storage and disposal practices. The committee report contained two important conclusions. i got to keep on. Number one. None of the existing AEC disposal installations is in a satisfactory geological location. Number two, present practices of disposing of intermediate and low-level liquid waste and all types of solid waste directly into the ground will in the long run lead to a serious fouling of man's environment. No shit, Sherlock. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to end there, you guys. It's been what a week. Uh, happy Thanksgiving if you see this before Thanksgiving. And by that I mean appreciate our families, appreciate our friends, appreciate each other, appreciate who we are. We are fighting to save our planet. The, this book was written in 1972. Everything in it has been ignored. All of the horrendous things that he predicted are coming true. The people of St. Louis have countless diseases surrounding the nuclear dump site. One of the dump sites, the waste disposal dump sites he's talking about in this book, is the St. Louis landfill, which is owned by one of those private companies that he talks about. And it has been grotesquely neglected. And there are countless and thousands and probably as however many people there are in St. Louis, I'll bet you two to one, at least 80%. I, 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 we don't, and you know why we don't have the numbers? No one has compiled them. We are, our, our hospitals are not even allowed to compile oncology rates. They cannot tell you how many cancers come through their doors. Why is that? It's an intentional, intentional deception caused by the nuclear cartel who has done nothing but lie to us since before these books were written. These books were written, you know why? Because Dr. John Goffman and Dr. Arthur Tamplin were hired by our government, by the Atomic Energy Commission, to make sure to find out what happened to humans if they got exposed to radiation. And their job was to say, oh, it's not that harmful. Let's process on and make billions of dollars and when their research came back that it is extremely harmful especially to children especially to babies in utero especially to pregnant people it causes massive genetic defects and this is exactly what we're seeing in St. Louis and our government is lying about it because they know they've been lying about it Liars lie. That's what they call. That's why they're called liars. And it is up to us to get the word out. And I'm not going to stop reading these books. And I hope I can stay on the air. And you know, I'm going to start having uh, the Saint people from St. Louis on my radio show regularly, the Age of Fission radio show, Monday. Wednesday and Friday and I'm hoping they will come on at least every Monday and somebody will talk to us and tell us and report what's happening. 
or not happening. And we need to call out elected officials and name names and, and talk about what's going on and get these people to squirm and fight back against the nuclear cartel who want to kill us. I, I'm just going to keep putting up these videos. So, you know, I put, put your courage feet on. Happy Thanksgiving because, you know what, us, we're together. We're all together. This isn't like, oh, you're an idiot. Like all those negative comments, anybody who makes a negative comment on my page is going to be deleted. So I'll tolerate some intelligent conversation, but if you come to my page and you're pro-nuclear, stay the fuck off, because I'm going to delete you. All this bullshit, you try to defend the nuclear bullshit. These fucking things, we are killing humanity and killing our planet. Nuclear has to end. It's bullshit. The greed has got to stop. So I know I'm singing to the choir, you guys. Put your courage feet on. Ciao.